straight to the point, stable values. How much do we know about JEP 502? We live in pretty much fascinating time with every new release, GDK offers newest features and improvements to the existing ones. And from one release to another, GDK really becoming a better tool to run your code. Hi there, my name is Dennis McCogan. I'm a Java developer advocate at Oracle. And today we're going to talk a lot about constants, how we control their life cycle and initialization, and how we can benefit from JIT compiler optimizations. For many years, Java developers have been using the reserved word final to express that a certain field is effectively a constant bound to a particular instance of a class. Essentially, it means that with every instance of a class, those constants has to be recalculated. Well, in many cases, it's only enough to have those constant values to be recalculated. But at the same time, we have a combination of words, static and final. With this combination of keywords, we instruct the runtime to create a constant value that has entirely different scope of accessibility and the life cycle. But what's more important in this context is when that type of a constant will be initialized by the runtime. A final instance field will be calculated with every instance of an object, while static final field will be created with class initialization, which takes place on demand, and probably will happen just before the first instance of a class will be created. So you see, it doesn't really matter how you declare your constant, because eventually it will be initialized with the application classes on their startup or with the first instance of a class. However, there are many situations in which the value of a constant will be requested in a while later in the application lifecycle, which means the application startup was needlessly delayed by such eager initialization. Obviously, there is another way to delay a field initialization up until the moment it is requested by the consumer. And I'm talking about delayed lazy initialization procedure for non-final fields. And an access to such fields is often provided through a getter method. Well, such approach has a few drawbacks. First, the code itself becomes a little bit brittle and harder to read, and any access to a field like that directly or through the reflection framework will potentially lead to null pointer exception. But the biggest loss in this particular case is the JIT compiler optimization known as constant folding. It's a very special technique of a compiler that helps to improve computation and access time to a variable whenever it's possible. So what developers actually need is a feature that is backed by the runtime that preserves constant folding while allowing the deferral initialization for the constants up until the moment they are requested by the consumers. The intent of JEP 502 is to improve the application startup time by decoupling constant value declaration from the actual class or object initialization that will occur only once. But what's also more important is benefiting from JIT compiler constant faulting that was only previously available to JDK internal components. Therefore, JEP 502 guarantees deferred initialization, which means that the constant value will be calculated later in the program life cycle, but technically only when someone will request that specific constant. Invoke at most once initialization. You see, a term lazy means that the computation will happen later in the program life cycle, but there is no guarantee that in a multi-threaded environment, lazy initialization will happen only once, but with stable values, there's a guarantee that the computation of a constant will happen exactly once, disregard how many threads actually working with this constant. And true immutability. Still, fields that are defined as final private are still subject for mutations through the reflections framework, except for fields that are member of uh, hidden classes and records. However, with stable values, it's no longer the case because there's a guarantee of immutability for the constant content. It means that stable values becoming a better way to defer constant initialization until later, and that initialization will happen only once, 
which makes this type of a new constant a good subject for JIT compiler optimization, such as constant folding. In detail, stable value works as a storage for mutable one's content that is marked with stable annotation. This annotation is not publicly available in JDK standard library, although I still encourage you to go and read about that. You can find link in the description below. So this annotation gives a guarantee to virtual machine that the content will be mutated only once. Thus, the virtual machine can perform constant folding for the code that works with this constant. Enough theory. How developers can get their hands on on stable API. Let's take a look at what we've been offered. We have stable value. We have stable collections, list and map. We have stable supplier and we have stable functions. Stable value of can be used with any type of a constant that is often created with a constructor without parameters or aesthetic methods still without parameters. From a logical perspective, the stable value supplier is a more advanced method for creating constants because it utilizes a supplier allowing for the implementation of business logic of varying complexity. The only limitation of this approach is the lack of parameters as they are not provided by the supplier interface. Along the stable value supplier, two additional stable value methods based on functional interfaces were proposed. Stable value function, this method assumes that instead of a supplier, a constant will be created using a single parameter function. To create a stable function, a set of values is required along with a function that will be executed no more than once for each element in a set. The reason for using a set is the need to determine the exact size and ensure that the collection consists of unique elements before creating an array of entries where each set element acts as a key and the function provides the corresponding value. Stable value in function is a more scope limited implementation of stable value function where all elements in the set must be of type int. And finally, stable collections. Stable value list should be used if there is a need to create a homogeneous list of constants that share the same provisioning logic. Sometimes a constant may represent a cache or website, or there may be a need to read and cache once multiple data sources such as third-party API responses or files. In such case, stable map can help to solve this problem. Stable values, collections, lists, maps, suppliers, functions, in functions. Curious minds might wonder why JEP502 authors did not introduce a new keyword, let's say, lazy. And I probably have an answer to this question. You see, adding another reserved keyword would means that we will have to alter Java language specification, which is quite time consuming and quite complicated process. At the same time, you may wonder why this feature doesn't have a name that has more of a laziness nature. And I'll give an answer here as well. You see, stable value name was derived from underlying stable annotation, which means we have a constant that will be mutated only once later in the program, so we'll eventually have a value, and it's mutated once, as I said, and it's stable, so we have something stable and it has value, so stable value, pretty much good name for that. If you want to know more about stable values, I highly recommend you to watch the Minbox presentation on our channel, and I think I'm done for today. See you in the next one.